Hi everyone, welcome back. And uh, yes, as you could tell, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, once again, I received a lovely package, a lovely gift from uh, Wickmark Australia. Uh, thank you, Marco from Wickmark, uh, for providing this lovely, lovely gift. Like I said, uh, they already sent me a package like this in the past, uh, providing the, the chuck and uh, the jaws as well. So I'm really proud to have them as a sort of a backup of my work work of my videos uh, so if you don't know who the Wickmark is Wickmark makes uh, the best chucks and accessories and lathes for us wood turners so um, without any further ado uh, let me just readjust the camera a little bit so we can open this up and uh, discuss what's inside and uh, we can open this up and uh, now I didn't reach in I just opened the package so this is first time for both of us and uh, just remove those so the jaws i picked up uh, for this chuck uh, the vm100 are shark jaws 55 mil and now i already have this one uh, these are i believe 45 mil so these are slightly bigger so i have uh, a little bit more range in terms of grabbing a nice clean clear foot and also range as well so uh, just show you this how they look now these are in oil so they don't rust or anything like that uh, so i'll clean those up later so let's open up the main package and now this is faceplate okay i know what it, what this is uh, and i'll show you just in, in a few seconds let's open up the chuck first Like I said, this is a VM100 chuck. Uh, this one is without the jaws. I already have the, um, the standard jaws, so uh, there's no need to buy um, a chuck with the jaws. So it's much better to, to buy just the body. And uh, so this is it. This one is direct thread for my lathe. And you can see lovely machinery and we'll clean it up and uh, you get uh, the allen keys uh, this one is for the mechanism of course and uh, this one is for the jaws itself now i don't need to uh, read the manual on this one uh, but if you want to see the full range of the jaws it's basically all here and uh, you can see here uh, these two i have so i have uh, 48 I said 45 uh, so it's 48 shark jaws and uh, 55 now I have so um, so you can see here um, in expansion mode you can expand uh, 48 mil on this one 55 mil when they are in a full circle all the way closed and uh, uh, to clamp let's say a nice foot cleanly without any marks you have a 35 and 42 um, mil diameter so you can see there are a wide ra range of jaws for uh, I believe they have four different types of chucks so uh, VM, uh, VM90, VM100 and then uh, VM120, 150 and uh, 140 I didn't know about the 140 so and, uh, honestly these are not super expensive more than other brands so it's well worth to have a little bit more money spent on these because these will last you a lifetime not saying that other chucks are bad but these are just a step above like anything else like their lathes and uh, any other stuff they make so um, let me just clean the the parts here and then i'll show you how to assemble this and uh, once i clean the parts here and show you how to assemble the jaws on pretty much every chuck i'll show you what's inside here it's a sort of a little treat uh for us waterners let's say so so let me show you how i clean uh the jaws uh, from the oil and uh, these package so I put them on this rag. This rag is, I have two of these. One is a little bit cleaner than the other one. This one is a little bit dirtier. So whenever I clean the lathe and uh, after let's say wet turning and uh, I always use these two rags. Um, so on this one, I'll just spray WD-40 
just to decrease yeah, you actually have to have a little bit of WD-40 so I have the other can and now these will be a little bit sticky let's say the dust will uh, stick onto them for a few days of use uh, but after that they won't stick anymore and uh, uh, what I'll try to do is remove as much of the oil as I can I'll blow the compressed air over them to dry it and uh, then it will go on the chuck and uh, the same goes for the chuck as well I'll apply the WD-40 wipe any oil off and uh, try it of course and uh, then I'll show you how to assemble the jaws. Now I'm a great believer in having a separate chuck body for each set of jaws that you have. Now um, I know for somebody that maybe turns once a week that's probably not the best um, way to spend the money. Uh, however if you do this slightly more or um, if you are a professional turner then it really pays off to having a separate chuck body for each set of jaws because uh, taking these on and off, although it's not that difficult, uh, it just takes time and uh, sometimes that time is really valuable to you and uh, just dropping the, uh, the, um, the chuck out of the lathe and uh, put the new one um, or a different one with a different set of jaws just makes life so much easier and convenient. Uh, now to to get this on uh, you have to search for the numbers now some of the manufacturers have it on top some on the side some of the chuck body itself on this one hope you can see we have here number four and you find the the jaw number four so in this case it's this one and I'll put it in the slot it has its groove and just lightly Put the screws in so I won't tighten these all the way well, this is slightly better angle so uh, what I like to do is just tighten these lightly so you can see these are loose and uh, go all the way around attaching each jaw to its corresponding place so number one is here so find number one uh, this is three and this is one so again put it in the slot and uh, so on. So once you have all four jaws installed and screws just lightly uh, tighten so uh, these are still a little bit like wiggly. Uh, what I like to do now is just close the jaws all the way and these will find its place and uh, now just tighten the screws all the way and again you don't have to tighten these extremely a lot even though these are staying on this chuck, I still don't want to tighten these extremely a lot. And once you tighten all the screws all the way around, uh, these are now ready to be used. And you can see these are nicely tight together. And if I pull them apart again, you can see and close them again. These are again nicely, perfectly, um, how should I say this? aligned. So this is the first Wickmark chuck that I bought with my own money. Uh, so this is still VM100 SDs too, uh, but this has 100 mil uh, dovetail jaws. And uh, the reason I fell in love using these are travel range and of course the quality and uh, the machining and everything, but travel range is for me something so so convenient and probably so uh, many times overlooked. So what I mean by that is this one is fully closed now and uh, I think it will grip 33 or even 30 mil diameter uh, and if I expand it all the way out it will expand almost 40 mil so this will grab almost like 70 or something mil and uh, diameter so you can see that's a really wide range and uh, now if you and I do not recommend this there is a safety pin here and if you remove that safety pin uh, you can expand the jaws even further out for a few millimeters more but I don't recommend that and don't ask me how I know that so keep it in place that uh, pin here 
it's a nice safety feature to have and still with that it has almost 40 mil of travel now that may vary a little bit on the the jaws type and size uh, but in most cases uh, 40 mil is the travel range and even i believe on the vm 150 it's even bigger so um, really convenient and you don't have to for uh, rough gripping stuff and uh, things like that you don't have to change jaws all that much so that's really like i said a really convenient and in my case speed up uh, process for turning a lot so uh, that's why i really again enjoy using these now let's open up uh, this little guy here so you might read from the label what it is and you have a knockout bar here and uh, this one is three in one screw chuck now i just took it out of the package and i have to wipe it off the grease this is something that i've always sort of wanted to try out and now i, I got the opportunity finally and uh, i'm really grateful for that so let me just quickly clean this up and uh, i'll show you the close-up what this is so this is the homemade version of a screw chuck, uh, also having pads here to reduce the length of the screw. And I have, a, like I said, a video on this, how to make this. It's really simple. It's a faceplate with a wooden block here and the screw. And this one is way smaller screw. Not sure if you can see that, uh, but it works. And uh, I've turned so many balls on this and it uh, just works lovely. But this is something something else, a little creature comfort, let's say, and uh, you just have to have those uh, once in a while, I guess, to treat yourself. So, if you are in the market for a nice screw chuck, dedicated screw chuck like these, uh, just make sure you order the correct thread size. Now, this is M33 by 3.5 mil. That's the spindle here, the thread size for my spindle and this just goes on the lid just like any other chuck with a little flick at the end if you turn this in reverse so it doesn't unscrew now uh, this diameter here the biggest one is 95 mil so that's really nice backing and on my previous one that's pretty close slightly smaller than this uh, pad here uh, so pretty much the same uh, but you have much coarser thread deeper thread with bigger bite which holds a lot a lot better in terms of the length of the screw this one is a little less than uh, one inch that's 24 mil uh, so really rarely do you need to use all this thread so uh, what I like to do and I learned this from my mentor Richard Raffen use spacer so uh, this one is I believe 10 mil uh, plywood and uh, you can just thread this on and uh, this is now wide nice backing plate and now I have half inch or 12 mil of screw and that will be plenty enough for pretty much any that will fit on my, my my lathe now if i need a little bit more grip let's say uh, i can put thinner spacers like these two or just one so show you that as well and that is now almost 16 mil of uh, of screw that's again really nice hold this is called three in one screw chuck so the three in one feature of this is so you'll use this uh tummy bar to get it off the lathe of course but also if you have to hold it to unscrew this so to get this off the faceplate just make sure you don't drop and uh, ruin the the threads and flip it around now on this side you have just grab a ruler, uh, 70 mil diameter screw chuck, and again, thread that on. Again, you can use it if you have smaller diameter stuff to turn. And uh, once again, if you remove it, the third feature is you can use it just like this. So again, you have this raised lip that can grab the, um, the backing or the wood itself and only hold by this section here nothing in between that's the the beauty of this so again you can thread it on now this is 
again, if this was sacrificial, then you can cut through this plywood. But again, you don't need to use all this screw, so I would uh, definitely use spacer. And uh, I would usually put a spacer like this, a smaller one as well. Again, if you're turning smaller stuff or maybe enclosed pot or anything like that and you want to get the outside shape uh, well done and then flip it around to hollow it you can use something like this so really nice again creature comfort it's not maybe necessary but it's a uh, one hell of a tool to to have and uh, again you'll see more of this in my videos it's really nice great tool and I flick it here a little bit harder because most of the time I'll be using it in this bigger configuration oh, so a lot of beginner turners are actually sort of afraid of using a screw chuck like this because they feel that they have much better grip using a faceplate like this because there are more screws in uh, now remember these screws are way thinner and if you have a catch it's a lot of force shearing force on these screws here uh, so they can snap and uh, now I've never had screws failing either on a faceplate or these, especially these. I have a woodworm screw, a couple of these actually, uh, from uh, Wickmark, and uh, these never failed. Uh, never break or anything like that at least not to me and uh, I'm not expecting this one to also have any issues with it and again it's a really nice system to use and uh, it's nice fast convenient and uh, again it will hold the blank on so securely uh, you can do whatever you need to do on the outside now uh, if you have the uneven uh, part of the wood that will face here on the screw chuck then you have to bring the tail stock to sort of give a little bit more stability but if we have a flat ish side that will re uh, merge here with the screw chuck then you are perfectly fine and uh, this will hold like I said really really well and again to get it off the lathe uh, just use this uh, Tommy lever or Tommy bar whatever it's called and just flip it off and uh, nice really dedicated screw chuck and uh, I'm really excited to to use it finally and uh, I guess dreams do come true eventually so uh, yeah I'm like I said really happy about this and of course we have to test this out so the spacer goes on and uh, I won't throw this on the lid because it has corners so most likely it will hit on your finger so just use the good old-fashioned muscle power and get this nice and on this is maple hard maple and uh, this is spindle gouge Now it's running at 1600 RPM. That's now nice and round and uh, we should make a nice tenon for this new chuck. So what you want to do if you want to get the perfect diameter and that is you leave roughly mil and a half maybe two mil uh, distance between the jaws or open them up so there is a gap and now use uh, this like dividers and uh, set this in and I have for all three now with this one all three sizes 
set with the divider so I don't have to measure each time. So just make sure you get this right and that should be okay. So this can now be transferred on the ball itself. So we can play around a little bit with this. So. Let's make some crazy shape of ball. So that's straight in, still have a little bit more of a millimeter, let's say, to remove. I'm using a ball gouge here to get this. Nice shape. One more cut. slowly towards the end and now we can finesse this and like this So this is 10 mil spindle gouge and just get into all of these beads. Okay, that looks quite good. Now if you're wondering what I'm going to grip it's this here bead, this ridge and uh, this is the time to expect the surface as well and that's super pristine lovely surface so just before I show you how this will work I just finish the bottom here also make a few beads, why not? <laughs> And let's finish up this bead nice and correctly on the side here, like this. And uh, just for a good fun, let's make a cove here. There we go. So a little bit of 180. Just a little bit of wax as a finish. Just make sure you have the rag in the corner of the bowl of these beads to get that all nice out wax.
and that's the outside done nice quick and easy and yeah that's looking quite quite lovely and uh, for the first time this chuck goes on the lathe and just a little flick at the end and uh, again I'll be grabbing this second bead just make sure you're in that corner tighten it a little bit you don't have to over tighten and uh, again this is running nice and true uh, this edge is uneven but everything else is nice and true especially the bottom which you never want to touch because it's finished and uh, now you can do whatever you need to do on it and uh, it will be perfectly fine so you take it off the chuck again you don't see any marks here that it was grabbed and uh, now there might be some dirt here because the jaws are still new and a little bit, maybe a little bit greasy but if i just polish it up a little bit should be just like as new and hopefully you see that there is no marks teeth digging or anything like that and it's nice beautiful outside so and once again marco from wickmark thank you very much for this lovely gift again and um, thank you all thank you all for watching my videos for supporting me that i do what i do here in my shop and um, without you none of this would be possible so thank you very much and uh, i guess see you in the next video